on this edition of the Genuine Article, the most beautiful ceramics in the world. Once the prize art of an empire that was lost in the mists of time, the beauty of Isnik tiles has been recreated after a century and a half of searching. We meet the passionate artisans who cracked this once secret code and brought back to life these rare gems of Ottoman culture. We'll look at the full spectrum of ceramics that they can produce, as well as learn the painstaking secrets of their creation that have been thousands of years in the making. The Genuine Article looks beyond the label to find information that will save you money and guide you to value. For thousands of years, Man and woman have been decorating the places they live with beautiful ceramics. But if you want to find and purchase the most beautiful ceramics ever created, well, you've got to come to Iznik in Turkey, where they produce something that's considered nothing less than the genuine article. The tiles that you're looking at are up to 500 years old, yet their color and condition are near perfect. Even experts have difficulty guessing how old these beautiful pieces of handmade ceramics may be. Why? Because hundreds of years ago, in a small southern Turkish town of Iznik, craftsmen discovered a secret that no one else before or since had been able to master. It involved two things, the composition of the biscuit or compound of the tile and the colors used to decorate the surface. The result is a tile of extraordinary brilliance and depth. A tile that will hold its color and design over centuries, even in the harshest sun. A tile that made the legendary decorations of the great mosques and churches of the Ottoman Empire possible. Iznik has been a, a center of ceramic production for approximately 9,000 years. Iznik has all of the natural resources to create ceramic ware, uh, both in terms of the earth in terms of what's available to be used as pigments for the glazes. So I'm sure that had a great deal to do with it. Because there was already the center of ceramic production there, the, uh, the Ottomans brought in craftsmen, both Armenian and Persian, to further develop the studios there. And it was really these craftsmen, using the tradition that was already there and the materials that were there, that developed the classical Iznik ware. Thus began an era of Iznik excellence that coincided with the height of the Ottoman Empire. Though the art form existed during both Roman and Byzantine rule of Turkey, it was during this time that the tile became synonymous with luxury and royalty. During the empire, the price of one tile would be equivalent to the price of a sheep. That is still the case today. Well, one basic tile is approximately $175, which is the market price of a, of a lamb. <laughs> Today, Iznik tiles that were formed hundreds of years ago can still be seen in mosques and palaces all across Turkey. This is the harem within Topkapi Palace, one of the most important and private areas in the whole complex. And the Sultan Suleiman, obviously in an effort to keep all the women in his life happy, covered it in Iznik tile, one of the greatest examples of their work in the world. It not only made Iznik rich because of the massive order, but it made it more important than it had ever been before, because what the Sultan liked, everybody liked. And it was everybody in Iznik who worked on these ceramics. Iznik tiles are unique because, unlike most art forms, there is no one artist who makes them, no solitary signature to indicate a masterpiece's creator. Every Iznik villager played a different role in their production, and their work as a whole was always considered a praise to Allah. In the, the classic Iznik style, there are certain motifs that we repeatedly see that have great symbolism. For example, the tulip. When we see the tulip in Iznik where it usually uh, is somewhat dropped and falling and that implies a kind of submission to God, to the forces of nature. The rose is almost always depicted in a pench style which means a kind of bird's eye view. It's fully open and flat showing its, its glory to God. 
So there's a very specific language that's tied into Isniqware. But it was a language that disappeared. Like the great glass artists of Murano and Venice, the master craftsmen of Isnik shared their secrets with no one. It may have protected their trade from rivals at the time, but it also meant that as business dried up due to the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, the vital formulas needed to bake and color the tiles vanished along with the craftsmen and the empire itself. And so, for 300 years, no one could reproduce the distinct beauty of these tiles. Until one woman made it her life's ambition to recreate one of the great lost skills of the world. A renaissance of Iznik art. Next. Welcome back as the genuine article examines the incomparable beauty of these Iznik tiles. And can you believe that they were lost to history for three centuries? After the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the sultans, who were the great sponsors of Iznik and its production, disappeared. And with it, the craftsmen who carried the secrets in their heads. It was left to one woman who loved these tiles so much, she made it her life mission to find the secrets buried within and recreate them. Professor Ischel Akpaygil founded the Isnik Foundation in 1995 with a single goal, to solve the mystery of this lost art. The foundation consisted of archaeologists who assisted in the excavation of the original Isnik kilns, professors of chemistry who studied the tiles that had survived to this day. But one specialist they didn't need were professors of literature. Sadly, there are no recorded texts anywhere of the tile-making process. The ancient masters were secretive, passing knowledge of their craft by word of mouth only to their trusted apprentices. The few scraps of information that did manage to get passed down to today were just as difficult to extract as the secrets within the tiles themselves. It was a very hard job, you know, to work with the master. They believed that they, know, they knew something and they didn't want to show you. The original kilns were recreated based on the findings of the ruins of the first Iznik wood-burning ovens. From there, it was a two-year-long trial and error process. Thousands of pieces were fired, but they didn't match the original Iznik relics. Materials were modified and temperatures changed, but still the formula for the base compound could not be reproduced. Support and enthusiasm for an Iznik renaissance began to weaken, but one woman, Ischel Akbaygel, and her son stayed passionate to the cause. Ischel continued the search for years, and her tenacity was finally rewarded. We'll share the centuries-old secrets in a moment, but as Ischel found out, the formula was only one piece of the puzzle. They did it with modern methods of analysis, but it was one thing to know how, it was another thing to execute the fine craftsmanship. And that turned out to be the most expensive tile making process in the world. And now the secrets that made these beautiful tiles possible that had been held from the world for hundreds of years. This is powdered quartz. To make a tile, you have to make 85% of it quartz. Why? Because only quartz gives it that deep luster that holds color for centuries like no other compound. So they have to take one of the hardest semi-precious stones in the world and grind it inside here with steel ball bearings in order to produce the beginnings of the tile. It's made out of 85% quartz and that's what makes the colors so good and bright as well as it makes very, uh, the, and the endurance of it, you know, it lasts much longer. Once ground, the quartz is mixed with earth and clay into a moldable compound. And this is where the Isnik Foundation's research really pays off. Here's the next step. The clay and quartz compound is formed inside a frame and left to dry for 20 days. Then these women take it and grind it by hand to a perfectly smooth surface and then size and cut every tile individually. Now in most ceramic arts, the next step would be to decorate the tile, put on a protective glaze and fire it in a kiln. But then again, Isnik tiles aren't like most ceramic arts. Now this next step in the process was a secret. In fact, if I told you 500 years ago, they would have probably beheaded me. But this is a very thin quartz glaze on top of the quartz tile. It means a vibrancy when the final cooking is done. Now, 
This first baking happens in these ovens at 900 degrees. But unique to Isnik tiles, there will be two bakings and a double glaze. That's their secret. At this point between the pulverizing, molding, drying and baking, the foundation will have put six weeks into a tile. And believe it or not, the most difficult and painstaking part is yet to come. Decorating and painting that tile. And it all starts with a pencil outline. So the outline is then covered in black ink. Yes, it's uh, called contour and uh, it's the uh, second process after the cooking. But this is a specialist job. Each one of these women applies just their art. One does black, one does blue, one does red, is that right? Yes, sure. Everybody specializes in their own uh, color. Because uh, the densities of the different colors are, uh, have a slightly different weight, and that's why um, the density makes a lot of difference when you actually apply it on the tile. So you can't paint the same way with blue as you would with red, you won't get the same effect. Exactly, you can, but everybody needs to specialize because it requires that amount of brushing or just actually uh, touching the paint on the tile. Yeah, once that's done, you cover it in another layer of glaze, Yes, right? we do. This is another one of the Isnik secrets. Yes, it is, yes. Okay. This is the, with the glaze, and once it's cooked, it becomes crystal clear, such as that one. Oh, wow, look at the vibrancy in those colors. I just want to compare this if I can. Let's lay that down. Sure. That, that you would never know by painting how it's going to turn out unless you no. had the hand of experience. Exactly. And look here, the red color is, is turning blue. So oh, it's, it is also too. deceiving in another words. As you can see, red here is turning to the color turquoise. Oh, right. Yeah, the, this is red. And this it is becomes turquoise. turquoise, yeah. So, uh, the blue is a, a much different color. Yes. And this, this red here is a sort of a light pink. Yes, it is. And that's the, what makes the Yiznik color so unique. All in all, it takes nearly 10 weeks for a tile to be completed. That may sound like a long time, but it pales in comparison to the centuries-long lifetime any Yiznik tile is expected to have. When we return, exciting modern uses for this classic art. That's next on the G2 